Hello students, welcome to the lecture on linear programming and after the lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Understand the assumption of linear programming, explain the process of formulation, understand graphic method, discuss the simplex method, understand two-phase method of linear programming problems. Let's start with a brief introduction to the linear programming. The early experimental applications of linear programming techniques in the petroleum industry as a refinery management tool had such profound effects that LP is now standard in almost every aspect of that industry. The first application of linear programming in the textile industry was designed to produce optimal plant efficiency, that is allocate plant resources to production problems so as to achieve the highest practical return. The immediate and more obvious linear programming results enable the mill operator to minimize the cost of cotton blends, minimize substandard blends, maintain accurate inventory records, purchase and sell most economically. The basis of the linear programming technique is the formulation of a mathematical model of the allocation problem. For problems of any practical size, this model is entered into a computer and the computer linear programming system rapidly calculates the optimal solution. The system may also produce reports which indicate the effect on the optimal solutions of possible changes in the given prices, availabilities, specifications, etc. Little mathematical knowledge or skill is required to formulate a linear programming model, nor do the operation of the computer and the analysis of computer results require any advanced technical skill. Let's now learn about assumptions of linear programming. The linear programming problems embody seven important assumptions relative to the problem being modeled. The first three involve the appropriateness of the formulation, the last four the mathematical relationships within the model. Objective function appropriateness. This assumption means that within the formulation the objective function is the sole criteria for choosing among the feasible values of the decision variables. Decision variables appropriateness. A key assumption is that the specification of the decision variables is appropriate. This assumption requires that the decision variables are all fully manipulating within the feasible region and are under the control of the decision maker. All appropriate decision variables have been included in the model. Constraint appropriateness. The third appropriateness assumption involves the constraints. Again, this is best expressed by identifying sub-assumptions. The constraints fully identify the bounds placed on the decision variable. A resource availability, technology, the external environment, etc. Thus, any choice of the decision variables which simultaneously satisfies all the constraints is admissible. The resources used and or supplied within any single constraint are homogeneous items that can be used or supplied by any decision variable appearing in that constraint. Constraints have not been imposed which improperly eliminate admissible values of the decision variables. The constraints are inviolate, no consideration involving model variables other than those included in the model can lead to the relaxation of the constraints. Proportionality Variables in linear programming models are assumed to exhibit proportionality. Proportionality deals with the contribution per unit of each decision variable to the objective function. This contribution is assumed constant and independent of the variable level. There are no economies of sale. Additively, Additively deals with the relationships among the decision variables. Simply put, their contributions to an equation must be additive. The total value of the objective function equals the sum of the contributions of each variable to the objective function. Similarly, total resource use is the sum of the resource use of each variable. This requirement rules out the possibility that interaction or multiplicative terms appear in the objective function or the constraints. Divisibility. The problem formulation assumes that all decision variables can take on any non-negative value including fractional ones. Certainty, the certainty assumption requires that the parameters Cj, Bi and Aij be known constants. The optimum solution derived is predicated on perfect knowledge of all the parameter values. Since all exogenous factors are assumed to be known and fixed, linear programming models are sometimes called non-stochastic as contrasted with models explicitly dealing with stochastic factors. 
This assumption gives rise to the term deterministic analysis. The exogenous parameters of a linear programming model are not usually known with certainty. In fact, they are usually estimated by statistical techniques. Thus, after developing a linear programming model, it is often useful to conduct sensitivity analysis by varying one of the exogenous parameters and observing the sensitivity of optimal solution to that variation. We will now study the formulation of linear programming problems. Structure of linear programming model The general structure of the linear programming model essentially consists of three components the activities or the variables and their relationships, the objective function and the constraints. The objective function of an LPP or linear programming problem is a mathematical representation of the objective in terms of measurable quantity such as profit, cost, revenue, etc. Guidelines for formulating linear programming model Identify and define the decision variable of the problem. Define the objective function. State the constraints to which the objective function should be optimized. Add the non-negative constraints from the consideration that the negative values of the decision variables do not have any valid physical interpretation. Let's learn about graphical method. The steps in solving a linear programming problem graphically are introduced below. We will apply the steps to a simple linear programming problem. Step 1. Formulate the linear programming problem. Formulation refers to translating the real-world problem into a format of mathematical equations that represent the objective function and the constraint set. Often data gathering, problem definition and problem formulation are the most important steps when using any tool. Step 2. Construct a graph and plot the constraint lines. Constraint lines represent the limitations on available resources. Usually constraint lines are drawn by connecting the horizontal and vertical intercepts found from each constraint equation. Step 3 is to determine the valid side of each constraint line. The simplest way to start is to plug in the coordinates of the origin and see whether this point satisfies the constraint. Step 4 is to identify the feasible solution region. The feasible solution region represents the area on the graph that is valid for all constraints. Choosing any point in this area will result in a valid solution. Step 5 is to plot two objective function lines to determine the direction of improvement. Improvement is in the direction of greater value when the objective is to maximize the objective function and is in the direction of lesser value when the objective is to minimize the objective function. Step 6 is to find the most attractive corner. Optimal solutions always occur at corners. The most attractive corner is the last point in the feasible solution region touched by a line that is parallel to the two objective function lines drawn in step 5 above. Step 7 is to determine the value of the objective function for the optimal solution. Hello friends, in this video we will learn about how to solve a linear programming problem using simplex method. Let's say we have a linear programming problem as z is equal to 5x1 plus 3x2 and uh, these three inequalities are the subject to constraints and uh, the non-negative restrictions are uh, x1 and x2 are greater than 0. So first of all we need to make sure that all the bi's that are the values on the right hand side of the constraints are positive. If they are not positive then make them positive by multiplying these inequalities with minus 1. Then we need to convert this linear programming problem into its standard form by adding or in sub uh, adding uh, st slack and surplus variables in the constraints. This is the standard form of a linear programming problem. You can see that we have introduced three slack variables in these constraints that are s1, s2 and s3 and uh, due to which we have uh, changed the objective function as 5x1 plus 3x2 plus 0s1 plus 0s2 plus 0s3 and you can see that the cost associated with these slack variables are zero. Now <coughs> we need to find the initial basic feasible solution. To find the initial basic feasible solution, we need to put the value of decision variables as 0 and uh, you may note that x1 and x2 are decision variable and uh, s1, s2 and s3 are slack variables. So we'll put uh, when we'll put the value of x1 and x2 as 0, we'll get the initial basic feasible solution as s1 is equal to 2, s2 is equal to 10 and s3 is equal to 12. Now we will make our simplex 
टेबल सो दिस इज आर सिंप्लेक्स टेबल इन विच यू कैन सी दैट द वेरिएबल्स वाई वन वाई टू वाई थ्री वाई फोर एंड वाई फाइव कॉरस्पॉन्ड्स टू एक्स वन एक्स टू एस वन एस टू एंड एस थ्री एंड सी बी इज द कॉस्ट एसोसिएटेड विद द बेसिक वेरिएबल्स दैट द कॉस्ट एसोसिएटेड विद एस वन एस टू एंड एस थ्री वाई बी इज कॉल्ड बेसिस इन विच वी हैव पुट द बेसिक वेरिएबल्स दैट आर वाई थ्री वाई फोर एंड वाई फाइव and uh, this is the initial basic feasible solution and uh, you can see that this table has been filled using the coefficient of the constraints uh, like 153 128 100 010 001 and 001 now we need to calculate the value for zj the formula for zj is cb multiplied by yj but for the sake of ease i'll tell you that uh, how to find the value of zj uh, <coughs> like 0 multiplied by 1 plus 0 multiplied by 5 plus 0 multiplied by 3 that is 0 0 multiplied by 1 plus 0 multiplied by 2 plus 0 multiplied by 8 that is 0 and in the same way All the values of zj here will be equal to zero. Now, for the net evaluation, that is zj minus cj, we will do zj minus cj as zero minus five, minus five, zero minus three, minus three, zero, zero, and zero. Now, as this is a maximization problem, so all the values of zj minus cj should be greater than or equal to zero. but in our case uh, it is not so so we can say that an optimal solution has not been obtained for that <coughs> now we need to find the entering variable and the leaving variable now for entering variable we need to see the most negative net evaluation in our case that is minus 5 and it corresponds to the variable y1 so we say that y1 is entering variable and it means that it is it will enter the basis now we need to determine the leaving variable and to determine the leaving variable we need to find the minimum of x bi upon y i1 that would be equal to <clears throat> XBI means two upon one, ten upon five, and twelve upon three. And we have minimum of two, two, four. As two of our values are same, and the rule says that such ties are to be broken arbitrarily, so we'll choose. this two which corresponds to the variable y3 and we will consider y3 as leaving variable the intersection of these two variable the element present at that place is called the pivotal element or the leading element so we will mark it with a star let's now understand two phase method Artificial variables and auxiliary problem. Consider the linear programming and let's have a look at the screen. But if we can force all artificial variables to be zero, then the resulting solution gives a feasible solution to P. So we change the objective function. Watch the screen. This is called an auxiliary problem. We're going to start looking at linear programming duality. 
Say I have a problem P, minimize C transpose X subject to AX greater than B. And suppose that this has an optimal value. Say optimal value is Z star. Now, we have seen that solving P is the same as finding among all solutions to the following system, one that has the minimum Z value. And we have seen in a previous video that we can solve this using Fourier Moleskine elimination to eliminate all the variables other than Z. Because P has an optimal solution, uh, we'll end up with a bunch of inequalities that give lower bound for Z. And there might be other inequalities for Z, we don't know, but the key is uh, we will have inequalities of this form, Z greater than equal to some constant. And in this case, Z star will actually be the maximum over all these uh, lower bounds. Now, what does that mean? If you look at the operations that we are allowed to perform in the fourier Moskin elimination, it basically is just taking non-negative linear combination of these original inequalities. In other words, uh, the inequality that finally says z greater than z star in this final system can be written as a linear combination of the original inequalities using non-negative scalars. Hence, there exists constants uh, y0, y1, up to ym, all non-negative, such that well, such that what if I take y0 times uh, the first inequality plus and so on, where a is now written in terms of rows, a1 transpose up to an transpose. So we, if we add up all these inequalities, we get uh, z greater than or equal to z star. Let's see how this sum actually gives us z greater than or equal to z star. Now, z, there's no other inequality that has z other than the first one. So what we need is y0 equal to 1. Alright, so basically, we now have this. Okay. z minus c x, c trans, so x greater than or equal to 0, plus all these inequalities. Uh, give us z greater than z star. Well, if you look at the coefficients of x, well, this sum, so if we add up all these inequalities, there's no variable x at the end. So that means that we must have 0 equal to minus c transpose plus y1 a1 transpose and so on to y m a m transpose. And the right hand side is z star, so z star must be y1 b1 plus and so on up to y and b m. Now we can rewrite this uh, in a different way, so we must have y transpose a equal to c transpose and y transpose b equal to z star. So let me summarize. If P had an optimal solution and the optimal value of this problem is Z star, and because of Fourier Moleskin elimination method, we can find non negative constants y0, y1 up to yn, such that if we uh, use these constants and take a combination of the original n inequalities with these constants, we will get the inequality Z greater than Z star. Let's make another observation here. Suppose I have a y bar square zero such that y bar transpose a is c transpose. Say x star is an optimal solution to p. And then y transpose a x star is the same as c transpose x star. But c transpose x star is the objective function value of our optimal solution x star. So this has to be z star. But we know that 
y transpose ax star is at least well it's a y bar y bar transpose b because well ax star is greater than equal to b so y transpose ax star is at least y trans y bar transpose b because each y bar value is non-negative all right well, what is this saying here well notice that i am taking y bar transpose a to satisfy the same equation as the y we got up here but now notice that if we evaluate y bar transpose b is less than equal to z star whereas before the y we got the y transpose b gives it exactly z star so what this is saying is if we take any y Okay, satisfying this equation y transpose a equal to c transpose and y greater than equal to zero then if you multiply that with b so if you take y transpose b it can never exceed z star but we know that there is one that gives me exactly z star what we can say in conclusion is z star is the maximum value of y transpose b where y has to satisfy y transpose a equals c transpose and y greater than or equal to zero but what is this problem here well this is a linear programming problem all these constraints are linear in y okay it might look a little funny the way we write is a little funny but every single constraint here is a linear equation and uh, the objective function is linear what well, basically is y1 times b1 plus y2 times b2 all the way to ym plus bn we now have a pair of linear programming problems let me call this d so this problem d is called the dual problem of p and the property that we have is if p has an optimal solution so does d the optimal values for the two problem are equal okay so if p has optimal solution then d also has an optimal solution but one is a minimization problem the other one is a maximization problem now one thing that we can get immediately out of this is if we find any feasible solution for b well then its objective function value is going to be a lower bound for the optimal value for p right because we know that any feasible solution to d uh, its objective function value cannot exceed the optimal value for p in summary what we have learned is if p is a problem of this form then we can write down a maximization problem of this form the amazing fact is if p has an optimal solution then d also has an optimal solution and the optimal values are the same this is the duality theorem for linear programming now in the end let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture the first application of lp in the textile industry was designed to produce optimal plant efficiency that is allocate plant resources to production problems so as to achieve the highest practical return additively deals with the relationships among the decision variables the total value of the objective function equals the sum of the contributions of each variable to the objective function decision variables are all fully manipulative within the feasible region and are under the control of the decision maker the constraints fully identify the bounds placed on the decision variables by resource availability technology the external environment etc Proportionality deals with the contribution per unit of each decision variable to the objective function.